Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our Onyx training working group meeting. Uh, today is September 17, and we are going to continue discussing uh, our approaches for such training. Uh, so, uh, last time we were talking about uh, ways and possibly uh, creating more examples for our testing. Uh, Wei Sheng, do you have any update on that? Uh, yes. So, uh, first of all, uh, the, uh, in, the, in our last meeting, uh, I first, uh, merged all the uh, training related here to one, uh, one branch and then make it as a pull request so that uh, everyone can have a single place to get everything we are discussing. And that PR uh, is uh, it's, it's ready to be used. Um, last night it had some test failing because of the file format or something, but uh, if you clone, clone that branch, uh, you will be able to build it uh, on Windows and Linux. And here's the pull request. Uh, sorry, do you want to share your screen and show something? Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, can, can everyone see my screen? Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so uh, here's the PR that includes um, every PR we we have talked about. It includes all the optimizer, the, the change of the probe format, training for portal, and the uh, loss function as well, and the gradient, uh, gradient operator. If you want to have a, a clear view of the load signature definition, you can click on the file changes and uh, see this uh, operators .md file. Uh, it's loading. So for example, here is the optimizer. We have a head upgrade, head and and uh, momentum here, and also gradient, gradient, gradient. Uh, let's see what this may look like. Yeah, so basically, it's uh, just it's very similar to other op uh, operator definition, but uh, if you, but it, this file is uh, provides us a, a clear way to see the uh, actual signature we are proposed. Also, it's gradient, 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 gradient. Gradient, yeah, I guess it. Uh, this readability is better than uh, pure text file if you want to review it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So everyone, everyone is welcome to to put comments and uh, um, merge this PR into their local branch to see if those signatures are working with while working for the, for them. Uh, I will keep sync this PR with the master branch and uh, hope it will be a centralized place for all the training stuff. Because uh, uh, as we have discussed previously, it's hard to have a global view to all the training stuff in multiple kinds of separated PRs. Yeah, this is my uh, first test. For the second one, second one, first. So actually, I feel previously I have shared something before, right? And that's a um, 
this is general framework for generating model. Uh, it, has everyone tried it or created it before? Oh, that's okay. Uh, so one comment I got from, from our discussion is that it's hard to see what the actual training graph. So I added, so I further added function to create a model purely for the training algorithm. It will extract the training algorithm from the model and uh, put it in another model so that Neutron can just visualize it. Um, so yeah, here is our training course. Uh, maybe we should start with the new one. Yep. So again, uh, the forward is still in a in a function because I mean forward is well defined and I guess everyone is familiar with that, right? Does it make sense? And otherwise, you will got you will get a lot of things not related to the, the training stuff. It it may contain tons of nodes. Uh, okay, so get uh, your inference function and uh, you compute loss from your inference output and the, the actual label and you get a loss value here. In the gradient operator, you compute the the the, 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 the gradient of weight and label against the, the loss uh, value. And it outputs the of the weight and uh, in the optimizer it gets the it's a weight to be updated and it's the gradient of that weight uh, the gradient comes from gradient operator here uh, it's named gradient underscore linear weight gradient uh, underscore linear weight and it's the state of uh, the second order momentum of the opti uh, of the uh, linear weight and this optimizer comes with new weights and the new second order momentum from all the inputs, and you get the new weight. So I hope it's a it can be a more uh, reader friendly way for us to to see how the spec would work. Uh, that's very good. Thank you so much, uh, Wei Sheng. Uh, so uh, that picture is it included in some document or you just showing? Uh, I'm just. I I will just uh, copy paste the, this file right after the meeting. Um. So uh, so everyone can try it. It's uh it it doesn't handle every case because uh to formally generate a training graph you I mean. Uh, Onyx is almost a, a programming language. You need you need a compiler, but it has, at least gives everyone an overview to how to use those newly introduced components to compose the model. Okay, yeah. I think uh, I think Simon had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, I just trying to find the mute button. It was to why the loss value is an attribute. Uh, what it? Which one are that is not attribute? On the gradient, I think. Uh, on the gradient. So you mean? Oh, I think the question is why is the lost well lost value an attribute rather than an input? Oh, oh, okay. So uh, the gradient operator uh, use attribute to extract the function to be differentiated. So you can see here what's the function we need to differentiate. It actually start with two input input and label and. Um, and uh, the, the linear weights, but uh, it doesn't show the initializer. Anyway, it starts with three inputs. What's the actual computation? It takes these three inputs, feed them into inference function, 
and load function and get the load value. Okay. So this uh, actually means that we extract a subgraph in the model and conduct a backward path of that. Does it answer your question? No. Sorry, I didn't quite follow the last bit. So you're, it's an attribute so that it can work out what subgraph or what the inference function is. Uh, so, sorry, uh, the background is quite noisy. No. Can, can you repeat? Hi, is that any better? No, better. <laughs> um, so, so it's an attribute. So you've got loss value as an attribute of Y. So that's the name of the tensor, I presume. Yeah, that's the name of the tensor. And uh, the actual value uh, would be computed from, so, uh, let me think about, think about how to explain it. Um, so the motivation behind this is to uh, separate the differentiation from, to allow you use different inputs in the derivative than the original input. Uh, Sorry, I, I'm not following that. Um, uh, okay, so Rama, do you have a better, I mean, a clear, more clear explanation than mine? Well, actually, I am a bit, uh, uh, I'm wondering why, uh, I know we discussed all this before, but uh, the loss value is not an input for gradient. It's not because it can be computed from other inputs, uh, from label and the linear weights and, and the data points feature vector. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, yeah, ignoring the exact details of the representation. So, so I guess the gradient uh, way to look at this is. Uh, it's computing uh, the gradient of some variables with respect to some other variables, and in fact, then doing the back propagation and returning the output value. Right, that's the interpretation. So, um, so I guess the question is that why loss function need to be an attribute. And then my answer to that is that we use attribute to define a subgraph that we want to uh, differentiate it. Uh, uh, right. Uh, okay. so, 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 so you can work out what the subgraph is. Yeah, yeah you, you don't need to do the differential to the whole graph. You can just find a subgraph of that and do the differentiation. Because sometimes in your pipeline, um, some operators are not differentiable. For example, uh, feature engineering part, um, for example, TFIDF, they are not differentiable. But after those uh, feature engineering is finished, your neural, net, neural network models would be differentiable. But it's just a subgraph of the whole pipeline. So uh, I can I can I can probably expand a bit here. So. Uh, this is a general from to enabling uh, representation of uh, the gradient graph between uh, for any subgraph. So, like uh, the gradient doesn't always start uh, back propagating from the last function. It can uh, like it can start in the middle, and then uh, and it can back propagate to a certain point where we need the gradient. So uh, the, the, 
the, the attributes of this gradient node is just defining the starting point and uh, ending point of those uh, of this uh, differentiation. Yes, I, I understand yeah. that. This is yeah. Yeah. Uh, why, so, uh, why does the loss value need to be an attribute? Why is it not an input? The input, because it it can be computed from uh, the three inputs uh, I listed here. If you have input, linear weight, and label, you can already compute loss value. So, yeah. So the loss so, value so, is the constant that is. Uh, that is being passed here. Uh, no, no. So I guess uh, uh, the uh, another way to look at this is uh, the, there are two stages to this computation. Um, so first, we need to construct the subgraph that computes the gradients or the back propagation graph. So think of this as a kind of a higher order function. So you specify the y and Xs, and we construct a subgraph that corresponds to the back provocation subgraph. And then you need to evaluate this back propagation subgraph for specific inputs and outputs. So the, the model here is the attributes are used to specify uh, the information required to construct the BAP propagation subgraph. And the inputs outputs are used to supply the actual inputs to actually evaluate the BAP exactly. propagation subgraph. Okay. All right. yeah, I think yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's a little maybe strange why, why the gradient is not connected to the inference function. Oh, it's implicitly connected to here you can see the starting point is linear weight and the label. And the ending point is loss and value. And the three, I mean, the one, two, three, the three variable here, they form a code um, scope in, the, in your model. And we'll just take everything in the scope out as the uh, differentiate so, mm -hmm. so so this is uh, okay so this is the graph you extract your your script generates right from the original model yeah and so I, I don't know how this relates to the other one whether some of these things are changed out so the gradient node looks identical in both cases or uh, what does it mean? It's identical to which case? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned you had written a script which will take the graph proto that we have designed and it, it transforms it to produce this for viewing in Netron, right? You said. Yeah. So I was just wondering, is, uh, does the, is, is this identical to the gradient node that appears in the original graph? Or is... Yeah. OK. So basically, my script, my script uh, does three stages thing. Um, first, it creates a training model. No, just two stages. The training model and second stage, it extracts part of the training model as the graph you are seeing now. Okay. Okay. So back to the, the original question, why it does not connect it to the inference graph? Uh, well, it's implicitly connected to the inference graph, inference graph, because here the uh, the graph we are going to differentiate starting from linear weight and label, and ends at loss value. And you can see, start from input label, we basically have been, uh, we can touch all the inference function, loss function, and finally end at the loss value. So we connect 
it's, it's implicitly coming to, to them. So, so I guess one way to look at, think about it is that that black box called gradient includes a copy of the left hand side, right? Uh, yes. So, so yeah. So we it should think of the. It just seems like we're duplicating information because we have the names of the input tensors as them being inputs. Why do we need the names of them duplicated in the attributes? Okay, so this for allows for allowing different inputs. For example, um, I can identify the subgraph and use another batch to compute its gradient. So you can you can work out the subgraph to create the gradient on so the input tensor and the output tensor, but then you'll use different input data or from a different tensor to actually run the gradient on. Yeah. So yeah, I mean I think I mean <clears throat> I think that the representation is not perfect, but we I mean it is uh, trying to retain some of the characteristics and invariance of the original graph. So, as I said, if uh, the, the, there are, it's really uh, this node is capturing two stages of computation. One is construction of the gradient subgraph, and the second is the evaluation of the gradient subgraph. If you if you ignore optimization questions, the gradient subgraph computation can be thought of as a computation that takes input and label and produces the deltas. And that, that is what this the set of inputs and outputs are trying to capture, the fact that ultimately the subgraph that produced is takes input and label and produces some deltas. Uh, internally, the implementation may, for optimization purposes, simply directly use computation that goes on in the left, like in the my inference function and loss value, till it may directly reuse those values, but that's not being shown here as a implementation detail. But conceptually, the gradient function takes, I mean, the idea is if you have a function f of x1, x2, x3, uh, we are producing a function that given the values of x1, x2, x3 will return uh, like the uh, delta f by delta x1 into the error and so on. So that, that's the mental model. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments about this part? Yeah, I think it is a little bit confusion, so maybe some additional explanation in some document could be helpful. Oh, uh, we do have document. Uh, let me open it again. Okay. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> returning to the question about the additional examples that we could use for testing, did you get a chance to work on that? Uh, it, do you think these two examples will be enough? So we had a linear model and then uh, MNIST. MNIST. Uh, what kind of model is that? Uh, it's the uh, location. So right. right, I know it's digit classification. So is it a big uh, network? Uh, it's the original network. Uh, it, it's not very big, but uh, uh, convolutional. I see. Then there's the end model. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it would be also interesting to see some recurrent networks, possibly, and maybe. Uh, hey, uh, I, 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 I really want to chime in here. I, I don't think we want to overcomplicate this. Like, we already spent a lot of effort trying to validate this. Uh, 
and I think like uh, it's I feel I personally feel it's time to bring this up to the community and hear the feedback first before we uh, putting extra burden on ourselves. So, some okay. uh, two examples are in the same PR. Uh, they they are not because, but I can add that. Oh wait, MNIST, I'm I'm not sure if I can add that because MNIST, if you want to check in MNIST example, it means that you need to check in the uh, uh, a, a big binary for, uh, file, which is not good. But for DNA model, I can construct it from square root, so that's fine. And also, your uh, scripts to create that uh, training model for viewing, is that also in the same PR? Uh, no. Okay. I, can, I can share it from uh, in a Git channel, but as I said, um, they are not, they are, they are, they are tons of corner cases that the script cannot handle. <laughs> sure, sure. So, the channel is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can, I should be able to open that file, but uh, why, why I cannot do it? Okay, but uh, anyway, we do have uh, very detailed documentation for gradient operator. Um, let me try it again. If, if I fail, you can go to uh, go to my docs uh, operator sign D. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, so you will see a uh, inference graph and uh, how we can connect gradient into the inference graph and get uh, its a gradient of some operators. There are micro examples with visualization here. Uh, you can read them and uh, discuss. Uh, we can discuss if you have uh, questions or something. Yeah. And here might be an explanation for the attribute thing. You can see we have an inference graph. We compute the gradient of the inference uh, backward graph of the inference graph and use other inputs. For example, the original, the original one is W, and here we have W underscore one. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's how we can get uh, gradient of some operator. Okay. So. Uh, <clears throat> Last time we just discussed uh, about unit testing for gradient operator. Uh, we do have two small uh, tests for that. Uh, let me open that. Here. So those two tests are quite quite simple. It's just uh, Wait, where, where, where am I? Okay, so both of them are built up on scale up, uh, scalar variables. It one of them is one of them only contains a single add node, and uh, I compute the gradient by running some simple Python expression like this. And this test contains two nodes, add and the multiplication. And yeah, that's the uh, um, I guess the most basic test we can have. Uh, 
Uh, other than that, um, I, I, I don't feel it's possible to add every to add a test for every operator in a short term because uh, it will require an auto differentiation engine, uh, which is PyTorch. Yeah, but to for basic tests, I guess there's these two is enough. How do you think? Oh. Uh, so you are saying, uh, you are suggesting that uh, just uh, having two unit tests is sufficient for for very simple cases. Yes. So the the reasoning here is that um, the gradient up is a very very special up. Um, it's in the sense that it can. Uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a placeholder that can represent the gradient function of any graph. Any graph. So it's impossible to cover you know arbitrary graph uh, in a, in in for 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 gradients or uh, unit test. So we we selected two simple examples to illustrate the idea and uh, expected behavior uh, for two simple uh, graphs example. And also, as long as the forward is clear, it's well defined, the backward is also well defined as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what Sherlock was saying earlier. I mean, I think uh, it's good to push this forward and take this to the community. And because even with the standard Onyx, I mean, testing infrastructure evolved over a long period after the original thing started. I mean, it is, I mean, until you know the proposal is accepted, why invest a lot of effort in other things and unless it's going to be accepted in this form i mean building lots of other things could end up being a waste if uh, so i think it's better to push this and uh, are you suggesting that we have a good chance of being rejected no no i'm saying uh, why Try to, I mean, uh, it's not like testing. You need to do all of this comprehensive other things before we take it forward. I think, I mean, it's uh, it's always going to be an evolving process. So, uh, I mean, over time, more and more testing infrastructure will be added, but this is a reasonable starting point. Yeah, agree. I think we should definitely move forward with this PR and invite the uh, other tracks, other SIG groups to help reviewing this. Well, last time uh, Wei Sheng suggested that I invite a couple of people from Microsoft who were from the <clears throat> I see it's uh, related to this, but uh, and I did invite them, but they didn't uh, respond, I guess. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so shall we, like, in, our, in our next meeting, shall we uh, just invite the guys from other C group? We do have a guy from Converter C group. Yeah, I think we our need a framework team. converter unit test. Yes. Representative so, from these three tracks. Uh, Chin, do you have any comments about all this? I, I, I think uh, sure we, we should invite others to uh, review this together. Uh, it would be good to uh, run some sort of a, a quick demo on how this works, right? Yeah, you already have this demo, right? Do we? 
Yeah, like the last time uh, you showed the TensorFlow. Yeah, but, but now now you've made some changes here. So. <laughs> In this. Like what's the difference? I I don't I don't know. I see a few changes in this PR. I believe we. No, I think the the fundamentals is still holds, right? I I haven't looked into the the details, so I I cannot comment on that yet. Okay, so now we have additional example, which is with MNIST. So, so, so you, yeah, even we run your test case here, right, to show right, it works. The gradient works for for add for um, more, right? For you review code is fine. I'm just trying to see a uh, running code that works, right? Uh, well, for that you need PyTorch. Or... Yeah, so I, I think we still need to uh, clarify on the expectation here. So we are not trying to build uh, a runtime engine. We are trying to define a spec that can represent runtime for training. So like, I, I still want to like, reiterate on a clear cut. Like there are some jobs that, that should be left to the runtime engine. For example, implementing the actual gradient up. That's basically the whole, the essence of the whole training framework, building an auto grad or auto diff. So our, our job yeah. is to propose a spec that can represent, can describe a, 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 a training graph. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I I, I understand yeah, that. Like, yeah, I understand that. Like, uh, like you, maybe like you, I I feel that you have the concern of whether this thing will work with the engine. That's that's because like we don't have the binary that uh, a running a training engine that uh, implement this. But I can tell you that Onyx runtime is taking this back and we're implementing this. So this is a well tested idea and can represent the training graph. If, if that's your concern. Yeah, yeah. another concern is how we can produce this uh, graph, right? We haven't, I know you have scripts to right, add this sort of training info and gradient operators, but which uh, uh, framework can uh, even produce this graph? The Onyx, the Onyx training, uh, training framework. No, 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 I'm not talking about Onyx itself, right? You start from some, I mean, Onyx itself is not usually the starting point, right? We start to do a model from some other frameworks that does exchangeable format. Right? If I already trained this in PyTorch or TensorFlow, so how I can produce this uh, Onyx training? Right? So you you need to add converters like, and the logic behind would be very similar to what yes. I did in this course. Exactly. Yes, but I think that's why we need to involve the converter guys to. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. So uh, that's why I, I think that's important to at least have, you know, PyTorch or TensorFlow uh, converter to see this spec and, and and tell us whether they can produce this. Okay, that, that's my point. So maybe next yeah, week we'll, I'm sure we will have you know uh, uh, Gunter. I think he's the guy you know taking TensorFlow and, and convert that into Onyx. And, and PyTorch, I don't know who is uh, maybe uh, Uh Yeah. Right. So, so we need to make sure uh, the right people are in our next meeting, so they can make, you know, after you know, comments on this, right? Yeah. I that's, think that's on the other great. side, I, I believe we, we did some. At least I did some exercise, right? Looking at the training try to, you know, uh, do a, a trainable model or in, in principle, that seems to be okay. Of course, you might have changed something here. I may need to look into the changes, but I don't, like you said, it shouldn't be a big change. So so I don't see a big problem there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think, uh, so on the converter side, let's uh, invite Spenden for PyTorch and uh, Gunther for TensorFlow. Yes. Yes. And on the uh, unit test side, let's invite Imad 
I think who is uh, driving the the, uh, the unit test uh, C group. Okay. Right. And on the framework side, um, do you know anyone who we should uh, invite? Maybe close down, but it's on vacation. Right? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. yeah, but let, let's still like proceed with this. Like, uh, I was just sitting right next to Ke Zhang. I think we have uh, talked to him about this uh, proposal quite a few sometimes. So yeah, I, and he was part of the involved in this design at the okay, uh, very good. beginning. Okay, so you will give me the emails of the people who I should invite for next time, right? Yes, sure. And you will talk to them to make sure that they actually attend. Yes, yes. And the so next like, time uh, if there's some time conflict, we just need to coordinate and make sure like all like there's one representative from each track that uh, attend us. Okay. Okay. And this will be in two weeks, right? Yeah, let's try to target for two weeks. Okay. Yeah, and like another thing on the um, the schedule kind of uh, so like uh, I know Onyx is trying to release the uh, point seven. Uh, uh, is that right? Point six for uh, targeting this Thursday. Yeah. So and then uh, point seven targeting November, if I remember correctly. So yeah. I I I would propose like we we should try to push this in the point seven time frame. I think they wanted it uh, to be about training. So if we are not ready, then they will have to wait for us to be ready. Yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, I think that's uh, the timeline that we see in our last meeting. Yeah. yeah. And it also may be related to the next Onyx in-person meeting. Yes, that's right. We would like to get information sooner rather than later because uh, we may need to get uh, visas, uh, et cetera. Yes. So yeah, let's. Uh, I'll, I'll follow you the, the the guys to invite, and let's meet in two weeks and discuss this. Okay, sounds good. Uh, anybody else wants to discuss anything else? Uh, by the way, if, uh, if you uh, if the uh, person from uh, other uh, working group then respond to you. Um, so you can ping us, we can ping other Microsoft people. Okay. Uh, just one comment on the PR. Since you have this uh, 2314 uh, all in one, uh, yes. how about others? Uh, can you put them in some kind of state or so? You know, there, there are so many. Um, I don't even know some of them are really up to date. Right. Can you put some kind of comments, or so we don't confuse people? Right. Uh, so, I guess if we want to proceed with this single PR, because I mean, I constantly feel that um, if I don't put everything into one place, no one knows what <laughs> the whole picture is. And I, um, so, my personal opinion is that I will just go with this big PR, and I will close out all, all other ones. That that's great. I support that. Any other comments? This is kind of different from standard PR creating process because uh, in usual we create small changes and push them, but this is not a small change. And uh, I guess everyone needs to see everything together. Yes. One single place. Yes. Yes, I think like uh, I I propose the procedure to be like this. So let's get a high level agreement on this general one big PR, so that to make sure that our approach is correct. Once we have that uh, signed up from you know the, the 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 committee, we can go back and work on each individual PRs, and work on the details and try to get those small PRs uh, checked in. So you still want to have separate PR? Yeah. So like that that big PR is just it's just too hard to review. And then for it's, I think it's just mainly for getting a, a high level idea and a full picture. 
of our, our, our complete proposal, right? Well, but <laughs> uh, so to to get this PR, uh, I spent two days to merge all other stuff. Uh, and I also made some uh, necessary changes to think them because some PRs are, they have interaction. I cannot just accept one and ignore another. If we want to merge those changes back, uh, it means uh, I cannot use git command. I need to do some uh, manual man 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 manipulation to my code. So uh, are you proposing we just uh, do a one-time check-in for this one big PR? Yeah, so, so basically there are three paragraphs in this PR. Optimizer, loss, and gradient related framework. I, I, um, I, I would be very happy if we can get this one big PR merge, but it, it might it might be hard. Let's 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 wait and see and see how their what's their opinion. How about that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Now maybe just add comments into the smaller PRs that they all merged into this larger one. So if people are interested, they should look at the larger one, something like that. Uh, yeah, sure. That, that, that's a quite easy test. Yeah, it, it's going to be hard to take like small PRs and, and try the whole training out, right? You need everything yeah. together anyway. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, good that Vaisenk was able to merge everything together and we should yeah, not that's waste. very good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah not waste that yeah, thank you for the hard work. That's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yep, thank you. Okay, so uh, anything else? We'll just meet in two weeks and uh, Vaisenk gives me the list of people to invite, right? Okay. Okay, thank you all so much. Have a nice two weeks and see you. All right, see you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.